Western Europe is the safest region in the world and the most beautiful. Western Europe has a lot to offer. But despite all the splendor, there is this one place that has proven itself to be the best place to travel as a tourist in Western Europe. And this place is Amsterdam. Amsterdam has always been an attractive destination for vacationers looking for a safe and fun place to go. This fantastic city is best known for its laid-back atmosphere of personal freedom and tolerance, combined with world-famous art, culture, canals, and Amsterdam architecture, this city has a unique vibe and charm. Downtowns, little streets, and canal areas are laden with cozy little restaurants, cafes, and pubs, inviting you to stay for lunch or supper, have a drink, enjoy people watching. Just make sure you get out of this area before the sun sets because the colorful lights shining from the establishments illuminating the small streets and outside patios make it almost impossible to resist its charm. Colorful, tall yet tiny houses lining 165 canals. Yes, Amsterdam has more canals than Venice. One can travel up to 100 kilometers on the water in the city limits alone. The citizens of Amsterdam are some of the friendliest Europeans and most prolific English speakers among the non-native English speakers. Crime in the city, like everywhere in the Netherlands, is low and according to The Economist, the Safe City Index of 2021 listed the city of Amsterdam as the second safest city in Europe. Despite all that the city has to offer, Amsterdam is surprisingly inexpensive compared to many other European capitals. One of the reasons why a tourist week in Amsterdam does not have to be a budget breaker is that Amsterdam is easily walkable. And how much time would you need to explore this wonderful city? Well, for a significant capital, Amsterdam is a small city. In three days, you could cover most of the city's attractions. So let's take a look at what you could do in Amsterdam. But before we do that, please allow me to say a quick thank you to all the wonderful people who have not only clicked the like button on our videos, but subscribed to our channel. Your support helps us do what we do. Deliver top-notch, authentic, and honest content from the best continent in the world, Europe. Thank you. The citizens of Amsterdam get around by bicycle. It seems that its citizens can easily live here without a car, but not without a bicycle. So it's no surprise that there are famously more bicycles on Amsterdam's roads than cars. And it seems that bicycles have the right of way, not cars. Imagine that. Bicycles are everywhere. People ride them to work, to the train station, to do their grocery shopping, and to take their young children around. It's lovely to watch. Biking in Amsterdam is a cultural thing, so why not join in and have fun doing so? If you're confident on a bike, renting one is a great way to join the locals and explore the city. Alternatively, a guided city tour by bike might be an excellent start. Amsterdam's downtown cityscapes are dominated by its canals. And the best way to enjoy the charm of the stunning canals and the townhouses lining them is by boat. In front of the Amsterdam Centraal, the city's main train station, you find the canal cruise boats, starting their tours every 30 minutes. The trips last about an hour and are filled with informative and sometimes funny commentaries of the most famous sites in the area. But if a tourist boat is not your thing, you can hire a small self-driven boat and cruise the canals on your own time. Not many people immediately connect Amsterdam with art and culture, but don't be fooled. As of November 2023, Amsterdam has about 75 museums, and those museums are so profound that they are indeed one of the city's major attractions. You'll find museums of classical art, modern art, theater, photography, film, press, and science. Some of Amsterdam's most famous museums are the Rijksmuseum. The Rijksmuseum is probably the best known museum in Amsterdam and the perfect starting point for your Amsterdam museum's tour. 
When you stand in front of its stunning red brick building at number one Museumstraat, you know it's home to something significant. You'll find artwork by Rembrandt, Vermeer, Van Gogh, and other famous artists inside. After a decade of construction, Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum opened to the public in 1885. The design of this beautiful building by Dutch architect Pierre Coopers is a gorgeous combination of the Gothic and Renaissance styles. For the museum's opening, among many other significant works of art, Rembrandt's masterpiece, The Night Watch, was put on display, which was quite a challenge due to its immense size of 12 by 14 and a half feet. After exploring the exhibition inside the Rijksmuseum, you can reflect on it in the beautifully landscaped museum gardens, the Stedelijk Museum. The Stedelijk Museum is one of the world's most significant museums for modern art, contemporary art, and design. Its collection includes artwork of world-famous modern artists, including Dutch artists from the 20th century. The Stedelijk, as it is unassumingly called, is located at number 10 Museum Plan and housed in a magnificent historic red brick building from 1895. In September 2012, the Stedelijk introduced its new addition to the public. The addition is lovingly called the bathtub. In a dramatic way, the building incorporates the original building, a neo-Renaissance design by architect A.W. Weissman, into a bathtub-shaped hovering superstructure carried by only six points of support. Van Gogh Museum. The Van Gogh Museum, located at Number 6 Museum Plan, is dedicated to the works of Vincent van Gogh and not only holds the world's most extensive Van Gogh collection, but the most significant single artist collection anywhere on the planet. This has made this museum one of the most famous museums in the world. Its Vincent van Gogh collection includes more than 200 paintings, 500 drawings, and 700 of his letters. Since opening in 1973, the Van Gogh Museum has undergone significant expansion and modernization, creating an extraordinary exhibition. Anne Frank House. Now, the Anne Frank House and Museum tells the story of the Jewish girl Anne Frank. In 1942, during the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands, Anne Frank her family and close friends went into hiding in a secret annex of a house located at number 20 Westermarkt. Anne had begun to rewrite her diary up until August 4, 1944, when her hiding place was discovered, and she was arrested among the other people in hiding. Stepping into this iconic place is a deeply emotional experience where visitors find themselves transported back in time. Climbing the narrow staircase and walking through the concealed spaces where Anne Frank, family and friends sought refuge from the Nazis. Montoren. The Montoren Tower is located on the busy Montblain Square near the flower market and the eastern end of the busy Calverstraat shopping street. Built in the late 15th century, the tower served as a gate in the medieval city wall. In 1618, though a devastating fire destroyed most of the city walls, the tower survived the fire unscathed. However, the following year, the tower underwent significant modifications. While its outside appearance was changed into the Renaissance style, a mint was installed inside. Like so many historic structures in this city, providing a glimpse into Amsterdam's colorful past, the Montoren is a true icon of Amsterdam's spirit and adaptivity. Rembrandt House Museum. The Rembrandt House Museum is located at number four, Jodenbreestraat. It is the house where between 1639 and 1658, the famous Dutch painter Rembrandt van Rijn lived worked 
and sold his art. After a detailed renovation and reconstruction back to how the building was in the mid-1600s, the Rembrandt House Museum was open to the public in 1911. The Rembrandt House Museum is a recreation of Rembrandt's living quarters and workshops. It's essential to remember that almost everything you see, the furniture, tools, and accessories, are duplicates, not originals. However, all furniture and objects in the building were carefully chosen to reflect what is visible in many of Rembrandt's paintings and in his students' paintings. This means the museum gives a realistic view of what a newly furnished Amsterdam house would have looked like during Rembrandt's time. It's fair to say that, therefore, the museum lacks a bit of authenticity. However, it is as close as it gets to giving visitors an idea of Rembrandt's life, his work, and perhaps the Dutch Golden Age in general. Today, the museum gives visitors a glimpse into the life of this extraordinary artist. There's also a Rembrandt monument located 10 to 15 minutes from the museum at a major square in central Amsterdam, the Rembrandt Plain. In 1852, the sculpture was cast in one piece by Louis Royer. The cast iron sculpture of Rembrandt is Amsterdam's oldest surviving statue in a public space. And in honor of Rembrandt's 400th birthday in 2006, the Russian sculptor Mikhail Dronov and his Russian-Dutch colleague Alexander Tateranov put up a set of 22 bronze sculptures depicting Rembrandt's masterpiece, The Night Watch. Until February 2020, the bronze sculptures used to stand at the foot of Rembrandt's cast iron sculpture. Unfortunately, the Rembrandt Plain Business Association and the artists could not agree regarding the Night Watch sculpture's payment. Therefore, the Night Watch sculptures were removed. The statue of Rembrandt himself remains at its original place. The Dutch National Opera and Ballet. The Stopera Building, located at number three Amstel, is home to the renowned Dutch National Opera and Ballet. Founded in 1961, over the past 60 years, the Dutch National Ballet has become one of the world's leading ballet companies, celebrated for its unique and extensive repertoire. The Stopera, a large curved building on the Amstel River's northeast side, was opened to the public in September 1986. Even though a new opera house for the city of Amsterdam was long anticipated, not everyone agreed with the project. The main reason for the large protests throughout the 1970s and 1980s was the planned location for the new building, as many medieval buildings had to be demolished to construct the intended postmodern building. The Opera and Ballet was opened to the public in 1986, despite citizen protest. The City Hall, also housed in the same building, was opened two years later. The Blaubroek. One of Amsterdam's most historic bridges is the Blaubroek. This bridge crosses the River Amstel and by extension connects the Rembrandt Plain and Waterloo Plain. Inspired by the bridges of Paris, the Blaubroek is one of Amsterdam's most lavishly decorated bridges, featuring ornate lanterns, crowns and sculptured bases. The current bridge built for the World Colonial Exhibition of 1883, replaced a 17th century blue wooden bridge in the exact location. Even though the current bridge is painted gray, the name Blaubroek remained in honor of the original bridge. When looking south from the Blaubroek, you can see in the distance another Amsterdam icon, the Magera Brook. The bridge connects the banks of the river Amstel at Kerkstraat, between the Kaisersgracht and the Prinzengracht. The central section of the Magera Brook is a bascule, which means it has a pivoting section that is raised and lowered using counterweights. The pivoting arms of the bridges are made of white painted wood. The current bridge was built in 1934. This bridge is a beautiful sight, especially in the dark when strings of light bulbs mark the bridge's outline. No wonder it is one of Amsterdam's most photographed bridges. 
The Wag. Built in 1488, the Wag, or Way House, was originally one of three gates leading through Amsterdam's city wall. But during the city's expansion and the increasing trade success of the city's merchants, the building was turned into a way house in the 1600s. After a reconstruction in 1996, the WAG's upper levels became home to the WAG Society, an art, science and technology institute. The ground floor holds a restaurant cafe in the WAG, offering an incredible dining experience in a space lit by 300 candles. The WAG today has the looks of a small castle. However, the first building at this location and part of the initial city's defense structure was wooden. The tower at the corner towards a Zeedijk and the Gelderskad displays a stone tablet laid to honor the laying of the first stone in 1488. The Wag, located at the Newmarkt Plan, is Amsterdam's oldest non-religious building. The Oudekerk, or Old Church, is Amsterdam's oldest building, constructed between the years 1213 and 1306. For centuries, the Oudekerk was the most essential church in Amsterdam. Today, besides being a monumental church, the Oudekerk is Amsterdam's newest art institute and remains one of Amsterdam's grand sites. The Oudekerk originated as a Catholic church, but today this place of worship is the national representation of Dutch Protestantism. The Oudekerk certainly has a unique place among Protestant churches, even internationally, as most Protestant churches are of relatively modest design, with only a few artifacts, but not so at the Oudekerk. Oudekerk was built as a Catholic cathedral in the Western European tradition, with all the characteristics and unique opulence these buildings are famous for, such as a wide and high main nave with an arcade on either side leading into a separate lower aisle forming the Latin cross, high stained glass windows, sculptured arches and columns, an elevated, richly decorated pulpit, wooden benches and wooden ceilings, grand pipe organs. The Autokerk is widely recognized for its three organs. There is the historical 17th century grand organ, a much smaller transept organ, and one more modern cabinet organ. Every year, various important organ concerts are held at the church, including the celebrated International Organ Festival, held from July to September. The Autokerk should not be missed by any Amsterdam visitors. Amsterdam Centraal. The Amsterdam Centraal station is a major international railway hub and the largest railway station in Amsterdam. This train station was opened in 1889 in the heart of the city and now welcomes over 190,000 passengers daily. The Centraal, as it is lovingly called, is a magnificent neo-Gothic building covered by a remarkable cast iron roof for the platform. If you stand in front of the Amsterdam Central Station, you will probably ask yourself, have I seen such a building somewhere else before? This is not a silly question because you probably have. The facade of the Central strongly resembles the remarkable building of the Rijksmuseum. The reason for this? Both architectural masterpieces are the brainchild of the fantastic architect Pierre Kuipers, who combined Renaissance and Gothic elements, often called Neo-Gothic. The Centrale is indeed a monument, and you can't help but feel small when approaching it. Its red brick construction and white decorative elements, the two turrets, the many ornamental stone reliefs and intricate details give the station a palace-like appearance. The Centrale is awe-inspiring and stunning inside and out. Floating Flower Market 
The famous Amsterdam floating flower market has existed since 1862. The market, a series of greenhouses and flower stalls on houseboats, is located on the Singal Canal between the Muntplein and the Koningsplein. The market came into existence because merchants transported flowers from their fields in the suburbs into the city centre using barges. For convenience, the barges were simply lined up along the single canal shores to entice customers to buy their beautiful, colourful flowers. Today, the flower market exists exactly as it did in 1862, with the exception that the barges now permanently stay in place lined up and securely tied to each other and the shore. The barges now have glass aluminum walls and roofs. Over time, the market has become a regular shopping street. Open all year, the market is a colorful and richly scented place to visit and stroll along. You'll find all sorts of flowers, bouquets and bulbs. Bulbs sold at this market are certified and ready for export so you can take them home or as a unique gift. Amsterdam Floating Flower Market is the only floating flower market in the world. Jordan District. The Jordan District in Amsterdam is located south of the Amsterdam Central Station alongside the Prinsengracht and the Brouwergracht, two of the city's most picturesque canals. The Jordan District is a magnificent example of how an originally working class neighborhood has been transformed into one of the city's hippest and trendiest upscale locations. Street markets, art galleries, indie boutiques, specialty shops, cozy pubs and hip restaurants flank the colorful and romantic narrow Jordan's canals and streets. To fully experience the serene charm of the Jordan district, visit in the morning or during the week when it's less crowded. The Jordan has a different vibe compared to the rest of Amsterdam city centre. The feel in the Jordan district is more residential and the pace is slower and much more relaxed. Here, you are among locals visiting the weekly markets, drinking coffee or beer in one of their favorite places, or simply walking with the family. Unlike in many other areas of the city center, here tourist traps and souvenir shops are few and far between. And an insider tip. If you're wondering what the best area is to stay in Amsterdam, we think that the uniquely inviting atmosphere of the Jordan makes this the best area to stay in Amsterdam. Royal Palace. Located on the west side of the Dam Square and in the center of Amsterdam is the Royal Palace of Amsterdam. As monumental as the palace is, initially it was not built as a royal palace but as Amsterdam's town hall, reflecting the prestige and wealth of the 17th century Amsterdam. The mayor of Amsterdam, Cornelius de Graaf, opened the town hall on July 29, 1655. The project's architect was Jacob van Kampen, who built the town hall on 13,659 wooden piles to prevent it from sinking into the marshland it was built on. Louis Napoleon, the brother of Napoleon Bonaparte, became king as King Louis I of Holland in 1806. Initially, Louis I ran his court at The Hague and later moved to Utrecht. Eventually, Louis moved to Amsterdam and claimed the town hall as his royal palace. The ex-town hall, now royal palace, became the official property of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in 1936. The Royal Palace is the country's largest and most prestigious building from the 17th century and one of the Netherlands' most important monuments. National Monument The Dam Square is the historic centre of the Dutch national capital of Amsterdam. After two temporary national monuments, on the dam in 1952, the Dutch government approved the final design for a new monument. 
Queen Juliana of the Netherlands unveiled the current National Monument on Dam Square on May 4, 1956, during the Remembrance Day ceremony. The monument is placed in the center of a slight elevation, steps in the form of concentric rings leading up to the monument. The center monument is a 22 meter or 72 foot high white stone pillar surrounded by several reliefs and statues. Before the steps and quite a distance apart are two sculptured lions on circular pedestals symbolizing the country of the Netherlands. The front of the pillar exhibits a relief of four chained male figures entitled de vrede, meaning peace. Above the central relief of the four chained male figures is a sculpture of a woman with a forward-leaning child and doves flying above them, representing victory, peace, and a new life. To either side of the pillar are the sculptures of two large male figures symbolizing the resistance by the Dutch people. At the feet of each of the male figures is a weeping dog representing suffering and loyalty. The back side of the pillar shows flying doves leading up into the sky, symbolizing liberation. A semicircle remembrance wall was placed behind the column. The wall contains urns with soil from the World War II execution grounds and war cemeteries in the Dutch provinces. Since its first reveal, the monument underwent two restorations. The first was in 1965 and the second from 1997 to 1998. The National Monument at Dam Square serves as a daily reminder of the sufferings of the Second World War. On August 14, 2009, the monument gained Rijks Monument status. Amsterdam is truly a fantastic place. It's full of art, culture, history, and a thousand stories about how Amsterdam came about. Its canals, the little streets, cozy pubs, trendy restaurants, a distinctive architecture. And not to forget the people of Amsterdam give this city a truly unique vibe and charm. No one should miss a visit to Amsterdam. As you have arrived at this point in the video, you're probably a fan of Europe. If this is the case, you've come to the right place. Here at Destination Channel Europe, we are European specialists with more than 30 years of work and travel experience in Europe. In our videos, we show you the beauty of Western Europe in much detail. So please like and subscribe to our channel so you will be the first to watch our new videos. Thank you very much.